I don't know if you guys like history, but guess what? I do. In any case, let's begin with a story. Rome's began with two brothers, Romulus and Remus, twins, raised by a she-wolf, Lupa. Dreamers, builders, rivals. They wanted to found a city that would outlast them, but in their struggle to decide whose vision would prevail, one brother killed the other. Rome was born through brilliance and through loss. Today, we stand at a similar threshold. Our generation is building a new kind of civilization, not of stone that stands, but of machines that move and think. And once again, we face the same question. Can we build without destroying what we love? My name is Edmund, and I'm 20 years old. I left Harvard to create Looper Robotics because I believe robotics will be the biggest industry in human history. And the bottleneck, I believe, is dexterity. Look at your hands for a moment. I'm assuming you all saw them before. They write, play, build, soothe. They know the difference between silk and sandpaper before your mind even notices. This is the ancient language of touch and feedback embedded into our human brains. Your skin runs a million feedback loops a second. Robots have had almost none. Closing that gap is the work required to solve dexterity. We've begun initiatives with communities around the world to study and codify dexterity learned from people. Smart gloves that passively capture how workers' hands move. Senses like position, touch, and video. That multidimensional data set is used to teach many different kinds of robot hands practical skills. And so, the ancient language of touch and feedback has become, that has become embedded into the human brain is transferred from the world of Orga to Mecca. Let's talk about today, tomorrow, and 10 years from now. Today, these gloves teach robot hands to grasp without crushing, assemble without precision, and they have the potential to reduce workplace injuries, help tackle food securities amid farmer labor shortages, and enable older workers to train machines instead of lifting boxes. Tomorrow, they could guide robotic surgeons in rural hospitals or disaster zones and bring back touch through prosthetic hands, letting someone feel the creases of their child's palm or the comforting warmth of a coffee cup once again. Ten years from now, entire fleets of machines could share this language of dexterity, rebuilding cities after hurricanes, repairing underwater cables, or exploring environments too dangerous for humans. The timeline is not theoretical. The United States already has 380,000 unfilled jobs in manufacturing. A quarter of the workforce is over 55, and barely 8% is under 24. Within a decade, we face a shortfall of up to 3 million workers. Reshoring won't close that gap. Even the most optimistic forecasts leave millions of roles unfilled. And national security concerns will only grow as jarring emergence of a new geopolitical archipelago drives forth military buildups. We're also now in a world where the US-Virginia-class Navy submarine program is determined by how many UPS drivers can be converted into welders. Demographics and math are forcing the largest automation wave in modern American history. So what does this mean? This robotics revolution promises real gains. Imagine fewer people injured in factories. Imagine veterans or amputees who are regaining full motion and sensation through robot hand prosthetics. Imagine a child in a developing nation such as South Africa, my home country, affording a prosthetic hand that's trained on the same industrial data that runs a robot in California. Robotics can shrink inequality if it's built with intention. But every act of creation costs a shadow. The same force that liberates can also displace millions, if not billions, of workers, and can concentrate power in the hands of a few. We must build boldly, but govern wisely because I don't really buy the comforting story that robotics will merely augment and not replace human labor. We're entering an era in history where, where history repeats itself and labor becomes a commodity once more. The next oil. Through generalizable robotics, the repeatable physical and cognitive work that keeps civilization humming will become measurable, tradable, and programmable. The nations and firms that secure the rights to produce, store, transmit, and price this new commodity will command leverage far exceeding that of the oil powers of the 20th century. But just as early oil barons struck wealth before rules, today's automation rush risks hollowing the social bedrock beneath it. Labor has been commoditized before. This is its digital reincarnation. A re-commoditization of labor with ethical and societal dilemmas we simply cannot ignore. 
So how do we outlive the shock? We need rules that run on the same horizon as the robotic revolution. We can't steer a lifelong disruption with two-year politics. An actionable idea would be a robot tax index to automation intensity, a way to measure how quickly mach machine hours replace human hours and rechannel part of those gains into training local resilience and safety and retraining. The more safely you scale, the less you pay. I think that the US has no shot at winning AI rates without robotics. This is because AI is a force multiplier. The real value of AI isn't in the models themselves. It's in what they touch. That's why leadership won't come from exporting slightly better models. It will come from rewiring ourselves with using them at scale. China may extract more value from slightly worse models because it can attach more capabilities to more factories, plants, and workflows. To stay competitive, America must stop treating AI as a destination and see it more so as a lubricant that, runs, that makes systems run better. The prize isn't perfecting minimally better grease to, to perfect machinery, but to build the machinery itself. That demands abundance and billions of workers, and we lack that. We need to remember that robotics is synonymous with the manufacturing of labor and scale it as a primary path to create infrastructure that truly extracts value from AI and helps us win the race. Like the story of Romulus and Remus, we are building something vast and new, something that will outlast us, something that will forever change the course of our civilization. But unlike this narrative of divine origin and heroic founding, our mission is no myth. It is a reality of inevitable automation. It is the challenge to scale robotics with dexterous manipulation. And it's the chance to build without blood on the stones of our foundation. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, robots can't really replicate such fine hand movement right now, but that's why Lupa and others are building these gloves. Thank you.